So as you guys know, majority of everyone here knows me. For those of you guys that this is your first time, my name's JL Espejo. Um, you know, I've been I've been trading, I'd say since about like 2014. Um, I, I won't say I really took took it serious. Or I mean like I really um started to, you know, take things serious where I was constantly applying and and putting in the effort towards getting better at trading. I would say about 2015, 2016. Um my background is, uh, you know, uh, I used to work a nine to five job and also was a real estate agent back in New York. Um, most recently, I was able to, because of the skill set of learning how to trade, I was able to buy myself and my family a home here in Florida. Uh, we moved in July. It was a big goal that I, you know, that I had set aside for myself and my family. Um, and you know, I, I did everything and anything to make it happen. Um, I have two kids. You know, I'm I'm probably the most humblest um, mentor you'll find in the forex space. Um, I I have this. I would say my biggest weakness as a mentor is that I I tend to care more for people than sometimes they care for themselves. And that's why that's why I like to put these classes out there because in the end. Our goal as a as a whole is to grow. I don't want I don't want no one investing into True Profit Academy and eventually feeling like they're not getting their money's worth or that they're not learning. Everyone here has the same information, they have the same resources, and it's up to who you are and what you do with this resource. You know, um, part of the things we're gonna learn here in, in this program and in general in the school is we're really going to focus on understanding the markets right we're going to understand the markets from a technical aspect and a fundamental aspect technical meaning you know from a chart basis so i'll open up let me open up trading view which is the website we'll be using tradingview.com is where we will get our price information on the currencies so for instance, as most of you guys have seen probably before, this is what a, a chart looks like. And what we'll be understanding is everything we need to know to be able to predict if the market is going to go up or down, right? We're gonna learn what each and every one of these bars mean. So in this case, we have an orange bar when the market is going up, and a black bar when the market is going down. Those bars are called candlesticks. There's a specific class um, that we will go over this. It would be on what's it, Monday, Tuesday. yeah, Wednesday. We'll be talking about it on Wednesday, all right? And all we're gonna understand is how to predict, how to organize our ideas, and most importantly, how to determine trade opportunities. Um, from a fundamental side of the, of the understanding, we're going to learn how there, there are economic news reports and events that each government of these currencies, they report monthly. We're going to learn how to read those news events. We're going to learn how to use that along with what we know from the chart side of the, of the game and really just kind of put it together. The first thing that I want us to discuss from day one, and any of my students can tell you who have been with me for a while or who, you know, who are improving on a day-to-day -day basis, on a week-to-week -week basis, month-to-month -month basis. The three, there are three very important focuses I want you guys to develop from the very beginning. The first one is patience, right? Having patience, not, not trying to chase the market because you're never going to move the market. The market's going to move and your, your job as an investor is to take positions based off the move the market's going to make. You're not going to be able to move the market. Two, you're not, you're not going to force anything by praying or, you know, um, asking God for, for the trade to go in your favor. We're not here to develop 
a sense of hope in the direction of the market. No, we're going to understand and assess, okay? I want us to develop a key understanding of what happened before, what happens now, and what happens after. So if you guys are taking notes, three very important questions throughout the whole process of learning, I always want you guys to ask yourself is, what happened in the past? All right, so I'll write them down here. What happened in the past? And what I mean by the past, we're looking to the left. Because the way the, the chart is set up, past data is in the left, the current data is what's developing, and the future data is what comes after, okay? The next question I want you guys to ask yourself is what is currently happening? The last question obviously is what happened after? Asking yourself these three questions, anytime you're looking to make a decision if the market's gonna go in your favor or not, it's gonna develop discipline. Now, anyone who anyone in this classroom who has placed a trade before, before or has experienced any sign of success or failure, one of the key things that you walk away learning is that patience is definitely important and that discipline, having discipline, that if you said, okay, I think the market's going to go down and that all of a sudden something hit you and you decided to buy it because you thought the market was going to go up you understand and then the market goes down you know you're not having any discipline there the way you're going to develop discipline is by asking yourself these three questions along with everything that we learn right to help us find this important word that i want you guys all to write down confluence all right so we asked, we wrote down the three important questions. The next term we're going to talk about is confluence. Okay. And confluence is when we have three or more signs of confirmation. Now, confluence, when I say is when we have three or more signs of confirmation, what I mean by that is that I want us to focus on finding any points of the market confirming if you think the market's going to go up or down. If you think the market's going to go up, what confirmations we have pointing towards that. And when we see confluence before making a decision, right, we will develop that with the understanding of all the topics we're going to discuss in this class. So. In Forex, what we discuss is the exchange of two currencies, right? So we have, in this case, I have this screen here. This is just a screenshot of my cell phone, right? And we have, in this case, on the little phone here, we have Euro NZD, which in this case is abbreviated, right? E U R N Z D. USD, JPY, GBP, NZD. These are all just abbreviations of the currencies that are trading against each other. The price you see to the right is the current price of each euro exchanged to you, uh, New Zealand dollars in this case here. So one euro would get me 1.68 New Zealand dollars. In this case, you see two numbers after that. We'll get into discussion about that in a second. In this case here, another example, we have USD JPY. We're going to see the US dollar against the Japanese yen. So in this case, one US dollar would give me 111.03 Japanese yen. All right. We see GBP NZD, right? We have the Great British Pound against the New Zealand dollar. In this case, one pound equals 1.89 New Zealand dollars. 
if you guys understand that, type one on the chat. Um, if you have any confusions in regards to that, type zero, and then I'll call you out so you can answer. Perfect, perfect. Let's see. We have David, Jose, Furman, Angel, Randy. Let's see, Jacqueline, are you with us? You understand that? If you do type one. And yes, sir. Sorry. Perfect. No, you're good. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of give you a rundown, Jacqueline, I know it's your first time on a webinar with us. Anytime I ask a question and, you know, if it's a yes or no question, one means yes, or you understand zero is like, no, I have a question, okay? Okay. Um, same for you guys, uh, Angel and Randy and Bianca. Hey, good to see you, Bianca. Let's see. Perfect. So. Again, so let's say, you know, I, I was traveling to Japan and I had $100 from the US and I wanted to exchange it to the Japanese yen because, you know, obviously I need to spend their currency in their country. So I go ahead, I take my $100, I exchange it, each, $100, each dollar is going to give me 111 Japanese yens, which in this case would give me 11,000 Japanese yen, right? So the way, the way we're going to understand how we make money in Forex is by a term called a pip. Now, I want you guys to remember, majority of the things in Forex or when we speak about Forex, it's abbreviated, right? So you may hear me say TP, SL, you know, buy, sell, a uh, pip, lot there's a lot of abbreviations in this sense now a pip in this case stands for a point in percentage now a point in percentage is a unit of change in that currency and its exchange rate so for instance if the market exchanged you know the market exchange for a dollar against the japanese yen at the present moment was eleven dollars and 30 cents, uh, 11, 111 Japanese yen and 30 cents, right? And there was a change of 30 pips, then that transaction, depending if the pips were an increase or a decrease, okay? So to give you guys an example of that, in this case, we're talking about the euro against the US dollar. So when currencies are quoted, in the forex market we're going to see the numbers quoted based off of the numbers after the decimal point so you know in in our real world we're only seeing two numbers after the decimal point but in the in the forex market we're actually seeing five numbers or three numbers now on currencies that don't end in jpy okay or currencies or commodities such as oil, gas, gold, silver, platinum, right? Those currencies are going to have three numbers after the decimal point. As you can see here, we had three numbers after the decimal point. So we, for the dollar against the Japanese yen, we have 111.037, okay? On any other pair that is not a Japanese yen pair, right, or any commodity such as oil, gold, gas, Brent, silver, platinum, right? Those those commod those pairs will have five numbers after. So to help you guys understand when the market makes a change in pips, right? What we want to understand is the numbers after the decimal point, what they represent. So to help you best understand it, the fifth number. The very last number in the end 
that is a fractional pip, okay? Or that's where we actually count points. So if you ever if you ever watch TV and you tune in to Bloomberg or you are watching MSNBC and you hear, oh, the Dow Jones is down 400 points. Well, 400 points is actually in the Forex market, 40 pips, okay? Now, points are calculated from zero to nine. Once we have 10 points, that is one pip. All right, JL, what are you telling me here? Real quick, simple. Right, so you see this last number? That number is gonna range from zero to nine. Once that number goes past nine and this number becomes a one, that is where we will identify the change in pips. So remember, for every 10 points, it's translated to one pip in Forex. So if you feel more comfortable identifying this as a 10 point change in price, then you understand the difference between 10 points and one pip. If you hear someone say, oh, there was a 20 pip drop on this currency exchange, right? Then that can also translate to 200 points drop. Let me know if that makes sense to you guys. Type one if it does, type zero if it doesn't. And it's very important you guys understand this because moving forward, Whenever we start planning trades out or we speak about, you know, a potential move and we're, and, and, you know, we start talking about it like, hey, Jacqueline, I can see the euro against the dollar. You know, there's a potential 50 pip move, right? You, all you have to understand is, all right, if the price is at 1.3030 and we're talking about a potential 50 pip move to the upside, all I gotta do is add five to this three here. And when the price goes from 1.3030 to 1.3080, then we understand that the market went up 50 pips, right? Now the same goes for the opposite as well. I want you guys to understand that. Pips are the change in units on a currency exchange rate, okay? So we're gonna talk about the Japanese yen, right? If in the case where we identify the change of pips, instead of identifying it on the fourth decimal place on a, any of these other currencies, we're focusing on the, third, the, second de, the second decimal place. So in this case, if the current exchange rate for the dollar against the Japanese yen was 104.60 and we said that there is a potential move to the upside of 50 pips when the market makes that move the price should be at 105.10 okay type one if you guys understand if you don't please type zero hello hello so now we have a primary example, right? So we, we understand that a one pip move on any pair that does not end in JPY or is not a commodity, right? We're focusing on the fourth decimal place and that change of unit is where we identify the pip. Give me one second. Hey, come on, take your pose. So on a, on a currency pair that is a commodity or any pair that ends in JPY, as we discussed, on the second to last decimal point, right, if that price changes up or goes up one or down one, that's a one pip move. So I want you guys to understand the following, to make things as simple as possible, right? When I like to teach, I like to follow a phrase called KISS, right? Keep it stupid simple. Try not to overcomplicate yourself. Just take it for what it is and simplify the understanding, right? So here we spoke about points, right? 10 points equals one pip. 
So here we're looking at a change of one pip in price or 10 points, right? So if I was counting pips, this is single digit pips, this is double digit pips, this is triple digit pips, this is quadruple digit pips, right? And so on. So if I know that there was a 50 pip move on the euro against the dollar, right? All I have to do is if it was to the upside or downside, just kind of add 50 pips to the current price, just so you understand that terminology. Now, for you guys, you don't have to calculate the pips in a sense. You just have to understand what pips are so that when you're predicting your trade or you know planning out your trade, you at least understand, right? If you set a target of 40, 50, 60 pips, right? You understand how to identify where in price that change of pips is. If it makes it easier for you to translate that in points, again, a 1,000 point drop or a 1,000 point rise is simply just a 100 pip rise, okay? Type one if that makes sense. Perfect. Awesome, awesome. So as always, the Forex market, it's a global market, right? It's the largest market in the world. So it has to be open 24 hours a day, right? You have five and a half days a week. Some countries are ahead of us. Some countries are behind us, right? I mean, some banks are, excuse me, some banks are ahead of us in time. Some banks are behind us in time, depending on the region where you're located, right? Some, I don't know if any of my students from New Zealand or, or Australia are here, but, you know, in a sense here in the U.S., it's October 7th for them. It's October 8th already. You know, they're, it's 10 what is it, 10 a.m. their time, 10 p.m. our time in Sydney, Australia. So there's four major market sessions. And the important to understand each and every one of these sessions is so that you understand there is a point in period, right, where the banks here in New York open and close. So when the banks here in New York open, right, we can know that majority of the movement occurring throughout that time period is known as the New York session, right? When the banks in London open, we understand that that in the Forex market is considered the London session, right? The Asian session is when the banks in Asia open up and the Sydney session is when the banks in Australia open up. So to keep it simple, right? If I'm somebody learning how to trade Forex and I work a nine to five job, right? I can understand that I shouldn't frustrate myself of because I'm missing what's happening during the New York session, right? Because I have three other sessions I can join and still make some money. Now, the important thing, and as we progress throughout this class, is that we understand the following, right? Each one of these sessions signal and indicate something that can happen, right? We spoke about the three questions we will be asking ourselves, right? What happened before, what's currently happening, and what happens after. Once we get more further along into the course, when we start talking about what the previous session did or what the current session is doing, then we can have an understanding of what potentially the next session can do, right? And that is how we start to generate money. Now, how do we make money? We understand pips, and the way we make money is based off of what we call a lot size or your position size, right? So the lot size or the position size represents the units of currencies you are either buying or selling in dollar figures. Now, the term buying or selling is not like in the stock market, right? In the stock market, when you're buying shares, you're physically buying a specific amount of shares based off the value of that share. So let's say for instance, you know, you were buying a hundred shares of a company that was valued at $2 per share, right? You're now buying about 50 shares of that company, right? 
And then when the market goes up to $5, you sell the shares you have and to take your profit. In a sense, in the Forex market, it's kind of like that. But the difference is we're not just buying the rise of the market. We can actually even sell the drop of the market. Buying and selling just translate as if the market is going up, we are longing that position, right? The term longing is just meaning I'm putting a position based off the fact that I understand that the market is going to go up and that is where I will make money based off the change in pips based off the lot size or the position size I have. Now, how do I lose money in the market, right? If the market is going up and I place the position for the market to go down, then the amount of pips that the market goes up is also determined by the lot size or the position size that I have open of how much I am down on that trade. Now, to help you guys understand the term lot in terms of units of currencies, right? There's three types of lot sizes, right? We have a standard lot or a standard size for a lot, which represents 100,000 units of currencies. There's a mini lot, which represents 10,000 units of currencies. And there's a micro lot, which represent 1,000 units of currencies. Now, in Forex, right, if, if I show you guys a screenshot of any trades, for instance, if it was, you know, this is a screenshot of some of the trades I took in the past, right? You see here how you would see the, the currency pair, right? So in this case, you have Euro NZD. I bought it at this price and the market went up to this price because of the position that I entered here. I was in profit this amount in that trade, okay? So what happens? Moving forward, when I'm understanding lot sizes in the Forex market, I'm able to see a specific amount of profits based off the lot size and the amount of pips that the market made a move, right? Because in this case, a standard lot is paying me per pip in my favor, meaning if I bought and the market went up, every pip the market went up from the price that I entered the market, I'll be earning $10 per pip. On a mini lot, on that same trade, if I enter the trade on a mini, I'll be earning $1 per pip. And on a micro, I'll be earning 10 cents per pip. So you guys saw on the screenshot that I had like a $1 and five cent lot, right? Well, in that case, a standard lot, as opposed to saying I have 100,000 contracts for a buy to the upside, right? As some brokers would translate it, you're gonna hear me say, Oh, I entered on a dollar lot, right? A standard lot is equals to $1, right? And every time the market changed in price based off of the amount of pips, if the market went up and I was on a buy, and let's say the market went up 50 pips, I in that trade on a dollar lot made $500 if I closed that trade at 50 pips in profit. Type one if that makes sense. If you don't, type zero so I can find out where I'm losing. Perfect. Now again, on a mini lot size, right? A mini lot size is representing 10 cents. So, if it's easier for you to understand, right? $1 lot, I earn $10. 10 cents, I earn $1. One penny, which is the micro lot size, I earn 10 cents. Understand that each currency pair, paired together, pays a different amount per pip, depending on the lot size. So I'll show you guys an example of that. So these are the currency pairs. 
if you guys go on to the download section of the channel for the discord and if you did receive my email you should have got this in your email right this kind of tells you the currency pair the currency paired with each other how much one pip on that lot size pays you so for instance a currency exchange rate or the currency exchange between the aussie dollar or the australian dollar and the canadian dollar on a one standard lot which is a one dollar position one pip is valued at seven dollars and 58 cents that same one pip on the australian dollar against the u.s dollar is valued at ten dollars per pip okay on the currency pairs of australian dollar and in this case the chf is the swiss franc right that is valued at ten dollars and 28 cents so as you can see the difference in the currencies paired together is actually valued differently based off of the pip count right and the lot size that i'm in as you can see here on a, on a mini lot that same pip which in this case is 10 cents is valued at 76 cents per pip and on a one penny each pip is valued at eight cents let me know if that makes sense to you guys if i lost anyone please type zero it's very important that we're all on the same page so while everyone's typing one or zero i want you guys to understand why that is important right because i'm a big believer in as opposed to any of you guys trying to take a million and one trades while learning this I, i'm a big believer in sticking to one currency pair so let's say you want to focus on gold against the dollar or the australian dollar against the canadian dollar and that you just happen to like and understand how that moves right focus on that one right and understand in terms of pips to the lot size what your goal is so if, you know most people like to set a dollar amount to a goal right so if i want to make a thousand dollars a week right and i'm trading a one dollar lot size and the currency pairs that i'm trading are paying me ten dollars per pip well i i know that i have to at least secure a hundred pips a week meaning every day if i break it down in a sequence of five i have to at least guarantee myself 20 pips a day five days a week to hit my goal right now i don't want to be trading a currency pair like the the let me pull this back up so you guys can see i don't want to be trading a currency pair like the australian dollar against the new zealand dollar where that currency pair is paying me six dollars and forty cents right because i'm looking to make a hundred pips a day you understand so when i mean a hundred pips a week so if i'm making a hundred pips a week on the australian dollar against the new zealand dollar then i'm falling short about 560 dollars uh, 460 dollars no i'm sorry 360 dollars of my goal you understand so that means i need to secure myself 36 more pips on that currency pip let me know if that makes sense to some of you guys perfect so i have a lot of people i have a lot of people reach out to me jail when you when you decided to do this for a living right and you know you went from you know receiving a paycheck to now you're trading every day like are you setting a goal or something right well part of my goal is understanding the currency i'm trading right so what what i would need in terms of the amount in pips on let's say if i'm averaging each trade at a dollar lot right if i trade a currency like euro gbp i may not need to collect that same amount of pips that i would need to collect on let's say a currency like euro cad right or euro canadian dollar so just so you guys understand that i want you guys to put that in mind on excuse me on this sheet major currency pairs right the pip value 
is counted on the fourth decimal place. JPY currencies or gold, silver, and commodities are counted in the second decimal place like we spoke about, right? We have a micro lot, we have a mini lot, and a standard lot. The micro is paying us 10 cents per pip on a general basis, right? A mini is paying us $1 per pip on a general basis, and a standard lot is paying us $10 per pip, you know, on a general basis. So the platform that we're going to be using to place trades is MetaTrader 4. Um, you know, if you guys go off and venture off with your own and look for a different broker, some different brokers have their own platforms. And some of these terms can be, you know, for instance, if you go, if you go with a broker like Owanda, Owanda is not going to show you your lot size based off of or translated in dollar amount. They're going to show it to you in unit amount. So if you entered a trade on a buy for 10,000 units, that's just simply the same as saying that I took a buy with 10 cents. All right. I want to play you guys a video. Um, give me one second. Let's see. And in this video, he's going to talk about some of the terms that I want us to discuss. So we spoke about we spoke about lot sizes, right? We spoke about pips. We spoke about how the forex market works. So this is just going to be a quick video. He's going to get into detail what is the forex market. You know what is a buy what is a sell kind of like clear up some of the some of the confusion if any of you guys are experienced the foreign exchange or forex market is the world's largest financial market and it plays a vital role in the global economy every day trillions of dollars are exchanged from one currency to another this kind of currency exchange is essential for international business forex market participants include governments businesses and of course investors Governments use the forex market to implement policies. For example, when conducting business with another country, whether it's borrowing money, lending money, or offering aid, a country needs to convert its currency into a foreign currency. Businesses use the forex market to facilitate international trade. For example, they may need to convert payments for goods and services bought overseas or to exchange payments from international customers into their preferred currency. And investors use the Forex market to speculate on changes in currency prices. Currency prices change almost constantly during the week because the Forex market is open continuously from Sunday at 4 p.m. until Friday at 4 p.m. So again, we live in the East Coast majority of us. So Eastern Standard Time, that is 5 p.m. our time, all right? Central Time. A trading day starts at 4 p.m and ends at 4 p.m. Central Time the following day. The market has to be open around the clock because of the global nature of the economy. Let's go over some basics of how trading Forex works. When you trade Forex, you're not just trading one product. You're trading two currencies against each other. This is known as a currency pair. The quote for a Forex currency pair defines the value of one currency relative to the other. The easiest way to understand any quote is to read the pair from left to right. Let's look at an example using the euro versus the US dollar currency pair. If the EUR USD is trading at 1.20, that means one euro is equal to $1.20 US dollars. Here's another example using the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar currency pair. If the USD CAD is trading at 1.25, that means one US dollar is equal to $1.25 Canadian dollars. Even though there are two currencies involved, the pair itself acts like a single entity, similar to a stock or commodity. And just like when trading stock, investors profit when they buy a currency pair, and its price increases. Investors can also profit if they sell or short a currency pair, and the price decreases. So again, when in Forex, right, we can buy when we expect the market to go up and sell when the market goes down both ways we we can make money off the market obviously now if i'm buying and the market drops 
then I can expect for the market to, you know, take that money away from me in the negative. Let's look at an example. Suppose an investor thinks Europe's economy is going to grow faster than the United States. And as a result, she thinks the euro will strengthen against the US dollar. She can buy the euro versus US dollar pair to speculate on her assumption. If the price of the currency pair rises, she'll make money. Conversely, if the price falls, she'll experience a loss. Now that we've covered the basics, let's look at a few key aspects of the Forex market. We'll start with margin. When you trade on margin, you only need to put up a percentage of the total investment to enter into a position. This amount is known as the margin requirement. When you trade other securities like stocks, trading on margin means you're borrowing funds from your broker. However, Forex trades can only be covered using funds in the investor's Forex account. Investors can't borrow funds to enter a Forex trade. If they don't have funds in their Forex account, they need to transfer funds before placing a trade. Forex margin requirements vary depending on the currency pairs and the size of a trade. Currency pairs typically trade in specific quantities known as lots. The most common lot sizes are standard and mini. Standard lots represent 100,000 units and mini lots represent 10,000 units. Depending on your brokerage firm, you may also be able to trade Forex in 1,000 unit increments, also known as micro lots. Margin requirements can be as small as 2% of a trade or as large as 20%, but the margin requirement for most currency pairs averages around 3 to 5%. To understand how margin is calculated, let's look at an example using the euro versus US dollar pair. Say this pair was trading at 1.20 and an investor wanted to buy a standard lot for 100,000 units. The total cost of the trade would be $120,000. That's a lot of capital. However, the investor doesn't have to pay that full amount. Instead, she pays the margin requirement. Let's say the margin requirement was 3%. 3% of $120,000 is $3,600. That's the amount the investor needs in her Forex account to place this trade. This brings us to another key element of the Forex market, leverage. Leverage enables investors to control a large investment with a relatively small amount of money. In this example, the investor is able to control $120,000 with $3,600. The leverage associated with currency pairs is one of the biggest benefits of the Forex market, but it's also one of the biggest risks. Leverage gives investors the potential to make large profits or large losses. One more important element in the Forex market is financing. This is the calculation of net interest owed or earned on currency pairs and it happens when an investor holds a position past the close of the trading day. The US dollar is associated with an overnight lending rate set by the Fed, and this rate defines the cost of borrowing money. Similarly, each foreign currency has its own overnight lending rate. Remember, when you trade a currency pair, you're trading two currencies against each other. Even though the currency pair acts like a single entity, you're technically long one currency and short the other. In terms of financing, you're lending the currency that you're long and borrowing the currency you're short. This lending and borrowing occurs at the overnight lending rate of each respective currency. In general, an investor receives a credit if the currency he is long has a higher interest rate than the currency he is short. Conversely, an investor is debited if the currency he is long has a lower interest rate than the currency he is short. Let's look at an example. Suppose an investor has a position in the Australian dollar versus the US dollar currency pair. Say the overnight lending rate for the Australian dollar is 2% and the overnight lending rate for the US dollar is 1%. The investor is long the currency pair, which means he is long the AUD and short the USD. Since the AUD has a higher interest rate than the USD, the investor will receive a credit. However, if the investor was short the AUD USD currency pair, he'd have to pay the debit because he's short the currency that has a higher interest rate. Financing is performed automatically by your brokerage firm. However, it's important to understand how it works and its financial impact on the trade. We've reviewed just a few elements of the Forex market. As with all investment opportunities, the Forex market has a unique set of risks and benefits, and education is the first step to determine if this is the right opportunity for you. <laughs> So here we are, right? So we spoke about 
We spoke about the following terms in the video. He spoke about um, margin, right? Margin being the amount of capital that we need based off of what we can control. Leverage is, you know, the ratio of the capital that we invest in terms of what the actual capital we can manage with the capital invested, right? The higher the leverage, the more money we can manage in a sense with less capital. Now, obviously, like he said, with more leverage, yes, there's room for more growth, but there's also room for more failure, right? So I want you guys to take into consideration the importance of what we're learning here, right? Where we spoke about the basic terminologies, right? And I'll review it with you guys before I let each and every one of you go. Um, overall, does everybody, is everybody on the same page with us? Does everybody understand what we've discussed or is there any questions you may have? If you have any questions, please type zero. If you have none, just type one. Awesome, awesome. Perfect. So let's review, right? So we spoke about lot sizes, right? Lot size being the position amount that we can enter, right? There's a standard, a mini, and a micro, right? Standard represented in dollar amounts, it's $1. A, mi a mini is 10 cents and a micro is a penny, right? A pip, a point in percentage, right? It's the change of units of currency. I mean, a change of units in the exchange rate of a currency pair right? A currency pair is what? Two currencies paired together or the exchange rate between one to the other, right? Just five sessions, five majors of five, four major sessions in the Forex market. And the Forex market is open 24 hours a day, five and a half days a week. So Friday, our time, 5 p.m., the market closes. Sunday, 5 p.m., our time, the market reopens, right? We understand how to calculate pips, right? Understanding the difference in a one pip move on a pair that does not end in JPY or a commodity such as gold or silver and blase, right? We're understanding the fact that on a major pair like the euro against the US dollar, right? A one pip move is when the market goes from 1.3030 to 1.3031, right? On the fourth decimal point is where we start counting pips. On the fifth decimal point is where we start counting points, right? 10 points equals one pip. We understand, you know, in regards to, <coughs> in the video he spoke about swaps, right? A swap is when you're in a trade and you code that trade on the end of business day for that banking session. So for instance, if you had, if you held the trade in the morning, our time, let's say you entered the trade at 9 a.m., 5 p.m. came in, at the close of those banks, you will be either charged or rewarded a swap fee. Now that swap fee is what he explained, right? The percentage, right, of the overnight lending. So if you decided to hold that trade after 5 p.m., right? you may be charged. Now, the end of the trading day is considered 5 p.m. our day. So for instance, in the chart, right, you'll notice that if we were looking at the daily time frame, the new daily candle will open up at 5 p.m. our time, and from there so on, it'll be considered a new trading day. So I want you guys to Review this video if you guys are new. I know some of you guys already have heard this and seen it a few times, but again, it's very important to understand these things because outside of us making money, right, we can actually, you know, develop a plan based off of the understanding of things. So if I'm taking a trade for 50 pips to the upside and the trade is, you know, looking like I might be holding this after 5 p.m., 
And, you know, maybe I was looking to make $200 and then now I was charged a swap fee of $25 total, right? That trade where I was trying to make $200, even though I was in profit 200, I'm really in profit now 175, all right? These are things I want you guys to understand. Um, before I let anyone go, does anybody have any questions? If you do, type zero. If you don't, I hope each and every one of you guys have a great night. I'll forward the video recorded, the recording of the video, excuse me, and I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow. If you do have a question, let me see here. Um, if you do have a question, let me see. Angel, how you feeling overall? Uh, everything's good. Just going to probably look over.